So welcome to this Tobacco University video. We'll be investigating genetic testing of cannabis to determine genotype. And this is kind of the picture here, looking at Gregor Mendel back, looking at just the morphology of the plant. Now when we're studying plant genetics, we tend to use more genetic testing. And we'll go over some of the techniques here and present a research study. So first off, using PCR was a very common genetic tool. So you hear this term tossed around quite a bit. Well, what is PCR? Well, it stands for polymerase chain reaction. And this is a scientific process that allows for a small, theoretically one, sequence of DNA to be replicated to many copies. Because a lot of times you're only dealing with a very small amount of DNA. Well, this is a way to kind of generate multiple copies to help identify if the sequence is present in that original sample. This is used quite a bit because it's a very precise process and therefore can be really great at being able to pinpoint very specific genetic sequences that a scientific investigator might be looking for. Now, the genetic testing options, there's many different types. You're looking at whether a plant is male or female, you're looking at the genotype, the full sequencing, or IP protection, which is intellectual property protection as well. And all of these relate to the cannabis industry directly. Now the research study that I'm gonna be presenting some of the data from, it can be found right here. Give the reference right here or a link there and kind of the picture of the first page if you want to look at it in more detail yourself. Now first off, gender detection screening of cannabis. So this is DNA, sex or gender testing benefits of utilizing this method. And this is the goal of this is to be able to save time by discovering if a plant is a male months before it can be traditional uh, traditionally detected or phenotypically detected based on the visual uh, assessment of the flowers it produces. By being able to detect this early, this can save resources by identifying plants early. Fewer plants need to be grown, which reduces the input, such as water, labor, nutrients, and lighting, and a whole host of other things that are needed to maximize the space to grow plants in. Upfront costs for the testing can be justified by the reduction of cost of reduced plant care, at least in some instances. So looking at the overview of samples here, this is again going to that study that I uh, showed earlier. Four well-known varieties of industrial hemp and six experimental varieties of uh, medicinal cannabis were in included in the experiment. And they're kind of listed um, here to give you some information, uh, sample marking, variety or genotype, the material and the source or provider of that um, plant material. So it's three different primers uh, pairs used for sex determination. We can see them listed right here. And the key part is while these are all primers can be used, they do not all have the same reliability. This is referring to the actual uh, primer sequences, the actual sequence of the DNA, the amplification product, and then the marker's name provided here in the first column. Now this is the visualization of the PCR products when we're looking at uh, for sex determination of cannabis varieties. And this is at the marker stated right there on uh, the MADC2 marker. And this shows you kind of the different varieties there and the different bandings. And if you see the same banding, that's indicating that that same DNA fragment exists there. If you see different bandings, uh, that's gonna indicate that there's different lengths of those uh, DNA fragments. We see on the left here, we see the marker, the ladder as it's called, with this representing 1,500 base pairs, this representing 100. If you ever looked at a gel from PCR products, the larger or longer sequences will be closer to where the wells were the first DNA was put, and then these smaller bands can travel further through that gel. And you see the uh, data presented here from the research study mentioned earlier. Now we kind of look at this, the conclusions of the study. So that's the actual data. Well, let's kind of get to the um, conclusions. Looking at the markers that they were kind of investigating, this uh, SCAR-119 marker appeared to be the most reliable for male plant detection in cannabis. The other two showed limited or even controversial results at times. This study confirmed that sex determination of cannabis plant is a complex process. Um, you can see, as we see and look in the data here, the genotype scoring, uh, different varieties here, different markers. Th uh, this would represent a plant with female phenotype. Here's a plant with male phenotype. This is a monoecious plant of green color indicating sample with genotype scoring in accordance with phenotype. The red colored samples with incorrect genotype indication. So this again shows that the SCAR 119 marker for the most part has all that green across the row indicating it was the most reliable out of the ones studied and presented here.
Now, the cannabis genotyping, just in general, when we're looking at that genotyping, uh, it's essential that the plant's blueprint, which includes the entire spectrum of possibilities for a particular cannabis plant. Same can also be said for the human genome. So while this is very focused to the cannabis industry, a lot of this also applies to other organisms. Knowing precisely what defined characteristics are in the plant will help guide decision-making when it comes to breeding. That can be very important, particularly if you're looking at breeding or introducing uh, a unique trait or strain. Now that sequencing that I had mentioned earlier, what is sequencing? Well, it's actually the kind of uh, sequence or the order of all of the nucleotides within the DNA. And this can be used to, to determine the stability and uniqueness of a cannabis plant while also determining relatives, origin, and ancestral lineage. Once the genetic code is known, this can allow for new and unique strains. Having record of genetic sequences can allow for protection against false patent claims and other legal controversies. So it's good to kind of have that as like the blueprint or sequence of the genetic plants that you might be growing or producing. Lastly, when we're looking at kind of uh, genetics, sequencing for IP production, intellectual property production. The greater amount of nucleotide bases sequenced, the greater power of differentiation can be occur. There are two classifications of sequencing. There's the targeting and then there's a the whole genome sequencing. So targeted of more than 3.5 million bases uh, across thousands of high value targets, including 29 cannabinoid and terpene synthesis genes, as well as several genes for seed production and sex determination. That's where they're looking at very kind of particular sequences that have been identified within the whole genome of the cannabis plant. Compare that to the whole genome sequencing. This provides a data file that contains the strain's full genetic sequence, which can be used to identify important genetic markers and determine novelty. So since cannabis genome is highly polymorphic, uh, single primer sets can often have reduced overall identification abilities. And why is this important for IP production? We want to protect what you might be developing and the resources you might be putting into something. We see here with the uh, sandals here being examples of ones that you may see that as McDonald's and Nike initially, but this is an example would be IP infringement where we're looking at kind of copying something. Not exactly. If you look very closely, you'll see there's uh, some quote misspellings there, but close enough enough to determine that uh, it's infringing on the intellectual property agreement. Same basic thing can happen here with the genetics, where even if there's only like a little slight misspelling, it's determined to be close enough that can be advantageous for growers, particularly breeders of cannabis, to protect the plant material that they've put so much time and effort into creating.